say something about 1683, uh, Sobieski and Vienna. I was trying to tell my kids uh, that how important it is. He told me, Mom, if it were important, it would be in my textbook here in California. Therefore, it's not important. How important was that? Uh, important for whom? Uh, it was very important for the, the Turks who thought they were on the brink of uh, overpowering Central Europe. Uh, as you know, they, they lost out. Um, I think there's a big problem, actually, for every country of exaggerating the victories and the defeats that we all met along, along the way. Um, uh, Sobieski is not my big hero. Sobieski made a mess of the government of Poland, Lithuania. Uh, he went to Vienna because the emperor offered him a large sum of money. And he was much better on the battlefield than he was um, running the, the country. Um, and as you know, when Sobieski died, that was when the Russians came in and got a grip on the old com Commonwealth. So, um, I don't think military heroes are, um, you know, the greatest uh, figures. Of course, um, all countries have their uh, military heroes. But, you know, uh, is Admiral Nelson in um, your Californian textbook? Probably not. Is he is, is he? Oh, well, the Americans have a few more connections with, uh, with the British. Um, <laughs> But I, I, so my, my wife is Polish, and when uh, she first came to London from, uh, from Paris, we, we met in France, and she arrived in Waterloo Station. And she said, Waterloo, why do you celebrate a great defeat? <laughs> Stanchik, as you know, was the king's jester. Uh, he um, was the only person in the uh, Yagilon court who could speak and not be punished for what he said. And um, this is a good role model for a historian, I think. <laughs> as, as you know, the, the historical school that grew up in Krakow in the 19th century was called the Stanchik. And that was one of the first uh, uh, the first Polish historians that I became uh, familiar with. I'm curious, why did you decide to study Polish history? Um, I think about it. Was it because of your wife? Not true, not true, not true. No. <laughs> there, there's a lot of mythology in uh, um well, by, by, by accident, um, uh, as a young man in my 20s, I uh, like learning languages, I was collecting languages and so on. I went to Poland completely by mistake, um, found that it was rather uh, interesting, um, partly because the official guide that was given to this group of British students had instructions not to tell us anything <laughs> uh, and she eventually uh, relented. For example, she had orders not to tell these British students about the Warsaw Rising. In Warsaw. And we'd go around and we'd say, you know, this whole city was destroyed. Why, why, why was it destroyed? And she'd say, the war. The war. Said, but yes, but what happened? The war. And that was all she was prepared to say until we, we kept pestering her till we, eventually she took us into a park where, uh, and she told us about the Warsaw Rising. So uh, that made me very interested. If there must be more of these stories. Uh, but I was also uh, impressed by uh, uh, what your son said. There was nothing about uh, Poland, Polish history, in our textbooks, or very little. 
Uh, but I had the opposite conclusion. I said, well, if it's not in the textbook, then it must be really important. <laughs>